I was uh, an experimenter on the Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft, and after they swept by the Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune systems, it was possible to do something I had wanted to do from the beginning, and that is to turn the cameras on one of these spacecraft back to photograph the planet from which it had come. And clearly, there would not be much scientific data from this because we were so far away that the Earth was just a point, a pale blue dot. But when we took the picture, there was something about it that seemed to me so poignant, uh, vulnerable, tiny. And if we had photographed it from a much further distance, it would have been gone, lost against the backdrop, backdrop of distant stars. And to me, it, uh, I, I thought, there, that's us. That's our world. That's all of us. Everybody you know, everybody you love, everybody you ever heard of lived out their lives there on a, on a mote of dust in a sunbeam. And uh, it spoke to me about uh, the need for us to care for one another and also to preserve the pale blue dot, which is the only home we've ever known. Uh, and it, it underscored the tininess the comparative insignificance of our world and ourselves, as you said in your opening remarks. Mm -hmm. You know, back uh, when men were walking on the moon, that there was that famous photo of the Earth rise over the moon and the, I guess you might call it the bright blue marble compared to your pale blue dot. That sort of led to movements like the environmental movement when people could see us as a united planet without the political boundaries. Uh, exactly. Uh, can we use the pale blue dot as an analogy to that or something that's even further looking? That's it. It's a set of, uh, of steps outward. And that Apollo 17 picture, I think, raised many people to an environmental consciousness. And uh, the pale blue dot, at least for me, mm -hmm. uh, is, represents the, the last moment in spacecraft leaving the Earth in which you can see the Earth at all. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the idea that we are at the center of the universe, much less the reason that there is a universe, is strongly, powerfully counterindicated by uh, the, the uh, mm. smallness of our world. One is emotional, and uh, a lot of people feel it. I know a lot of people don't. And that is we come from wanderers, from hunter-gatherers. 99.9% .9 of our tenure on Earth was in that condition, no fixed abode. It was long before we had villages and, and cities. And now the Earth is all explored. We're in some sedentary hiatus. And I think a lot of people long for some exploration. You don't have to do it yourself because of uh, virtual reality. A few people exploring can communicate it to many. On the other hand... If your child is hungry, the appeal of this argument is not very high. Yet, yet when, uh, parenthetically, when uh, Sh Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 smashed into Jupiter, it was front-page news. Yes. People that, were transfixed by this. And that brings me to the, the uh, of course, uh, uh, absolutely. And that brings me to the second and third points, which are much more immediate and practical. While I do not for a moment suggest that the Earth is a disposable planet, and I think we have to make the most heroic efforts to preserve the environment, it is a fact that our technology has reached formidable, maybe even awesome proportions. The environment that sustains us is very vulnerable. The thickness of the atmosphere that we breathe is compared to the size of the Earth about the thickness of a, the coat of shellac on a schoolroom globe. And uh, that being the case there is a chance that we will do ourselves in. We're certainly a danger to ourselves. I would like to see self-sustaining human communities on other worlds in the long run, there's no big hurry, so that we hedge our bets or diversify our portfolio. Um, the, clearly, our chances are much greater if we do that. And the third point is there is a specific danger that we are now able to identify and that's connected with what you just said about Schumacher Levy 9 slamming into Jupiter last July. The Earth lives in a bad neighborhood in space. We orbit the sun amid a swarm, of an enormous number of asteroids and comets. 
And you just take one look at the distribution of these orbits, and it's clear that the Earth has to run into them or they into us. Most of them are little, burn up in the atmosphere, don't do much harm. But the longer you wait, the more likely it is that a big one will hit. The ones that hit Jupiter last July, were the biggest ones there, were about a kilometer across. They produced a blotch in the clouds of Jupiter that was about Earth-sized. And a kilometer across object is the size which would co cause enormous environmental damage to the Earth. A 10-kilometer object that hit the Earth 65 million years ago wiped out the dinosaurs and 75% of the species of life on Earth. Now, to deal with this, first of all, we have to inventory these near-Earth objects. Surely we should be busy finding out if there's any danger from any particular object. We're not even doing that yet. And secondly, we ought to develop the technique to deal with an errant asteroid or comet if it's found to be on Earth impact trajectory. And without going into, we can if you want, the techniques for doing that, there's no way to do that unless we're out there. So this is, I claim, a very practical reason why in the long term humans have to be out in the inner solar system at least.